Welcome back. It is time for some quick takes because we had some Luka magic folks with a 128 to 114 win against the Suns. Mavs star Luka Doncic became just the fourth player in NBA history to score 50 in a Christmas Day game while also casually passing the 10,000 career points milestone. So Shannon, where does this rank in Christmas Day performances? You know, guys, I'm going to have to go with just the Christmas Day performances that I saw with my very eyes. So I'm going to have to exclude Will's 59-36 on Christmas. Uh, LeBron had a 27-point triple-double and got the best of Kobe, but that's not it for me. I saw Nikola Jokic have, what, a 41-15-15 and 15 last year. That's not it for me. My greatest memory of a Christmas Day game with Bird Dog King. Bernard King went for 60 in the garden on Christmas Day, and that's his highest scoring game ever. So that was the best one for me, although Luka 50 and 15 was something special. But Bernard King on Christmas Day in 1984 was the best one I saw with my own eyes. Not gonna lie, I agree with you, Shannon. All right, as um, <laughs> I'm just gonna keep agreeing with you. You know what you're talking about. You're in the big seat. All right, as mentioned earlier, the Golden State Warriors fell to the Denver Nuggets 120 to 114 yesterday, and Jokic finished with 26 points despite a 4 of 12 showing from the floor. He set a career high with his 18 made free throws, and the Nuggets were 26 of 32 from the free throw line. Now, after the game, Steve Kerr sounded off about the officiating of the night. I have no no problem with um, the officials themselves. Um, they're all across the league. We have really good officials. I have a problem with the way we're, we are um, legislating defense out of the game. That's what we're doing in the NBA. The way we're teaching the officials, we're just enabling players to BS their way to the foul line. Um, if I were a fan, I wouldn't have wanted to watch the second half of that game. It was disgusting. That was a very interesting uh, soundbite right there. All right, Perk and birthday boy legs back with us. Now, Perk, were Steve Kerr's comments fair or foul? They're foul. And over the last couple of weeks, a lot of Steve Kerr comments have been foul. And matter of fact, they've been making my damn skin crawl when I think about it. Number one, if you're going to call out something, don't hide behind subliminals. Put an address on it. You were talking about Jokic and his 18 free throws because 18 of his 18 of his 26 points came from the free throw line last night. That's number one. And number two, Jokic is one of the like most high IQ players the game has ever seen. I played with a great player in Paul Pierce that when he didn't have it going offensively, his shots weren't falling, he got to the free throw line. Secondly, I'm going to take a line from Finesse two times. It's cool when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. When Golden State was making their runs and, and winning championships with KD, without KD, and calls were going their way, everything was fine and dandy. Now, Steve Kerr, do you really want to go back to the old school rules? Because that might hurt your offense. Do you really want to go back to old school hand checking, stopping progress? Holding up Steph Curry, getting physical with Klay Thompson? Do you really want that? Or do you want to address the problem at hand last night? That Steph Curry was 7 for 21, Klay Thompson 3 for 13. That was the real problem. Like, address that. It was nothing yeah. wrong with that game last night. You're absolutely right. Well, get a hey, Steve Kerr, let my recommendations be you go get you a player that can BS his way to the line, to the free throw line, because that's your problem. You can't get fouled because you're selling for jump shots, and teams are smart enough not to foul your jump shooters. They got Nikola Jokic. It's just like Joel B. Well, how do you stop him? You've got to foul him, especially when you're a small team like Golden State. Golden State doesn't have a big that you can drop the ball down to and say, go get me a bucket or go get fouled. And so when Steph Curry is shooting all those jump shots and they're not going in, and Klay Thompson is shooting all those jump shots and they're not going in, they've always been a team that didn't shoot a whole lot of foul shots, legs and perk, because they shoot jump shots. They don't got nobody that can bang. They got nobody with it back to the basket and can go get easy buckets or he gets fouled. That's bull job, Steve Kerr. Like I said, the problem was you had is that Nikola Jokic didn't have it going offensively uh, 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 shooting the ball, but he was able to draw fouls and get to the free throw line and had a great stat line. But that's your, that's your guy's fault because you're not a big team. Well, look, I, I, look, there's a lot of nights I watch NBA games and I have a little bit of a problem with some of the calls that are made and sending guys to the line with very minimal contact. I guess that's just part of my mindset from when I played. It's, it is different in that way. But here's the thing. Here's where Steve Kerr is wrong. 
when he makes comments like this after a game against Jokic, it seems like he's now putting the shine on Jokic. Like he is the poster child for guys that do mm-hmm. this. And the truth of the matter is, Jokic only gets to the line about six times a game. I think Thank for his you. career, he averages 4.6 free throw attempts per game. Like, this is nothing like you get with Embiid Joel and Embiid. Giannis. Yeah. Both Giannis. of those guys, I think they have, yeah, they have five seasons each where they've averaged 10 or more free throws a game. Jokic, for his career, averages six mm-hmm. uh, or 4.6. He's averaging six this year. It just so happened on this night against a smaller team, a physically weaker team, a team that just has a propensity for fouling a lot. Jokic took advantage of getting the calls, went to the line on a, on a night when he wasn't feeling it with his jump shot. He only had four field goals. So he wasn't really having a normal Jokic offensive game. Guess what great players do? They find another way to beat you. So on this mm-hmm. particular night, that's what he did. He took advantage of a smaller team against him smaller matchups they were trying to put against them, and he got to the line 18 times. So that's where I have a problem with Kurt making these comments after this game because it seems like he's trying to signal out Jokic as a guy that's taking advantage of this by doing a lot of acting, and the truth just doesn't bear that out when you look at the facts. Nobody touches the ball more in this league than Jokic. 101 touches a game, he only shoots six free throws a night. It just was one of those nights for Steve Kerr, unfortunately, that Jokic was able to take advantage of it. Well, and speaking of facts, if I may, if I may interject, gentlemen, Denver ent- entered Monday shooting the worst free throw percentage in the NBA. So it was a it was a good night, but like the facts are the facts here. Right, they yeah. made them. I mean, you go eighteen for eighteen, <laughs> everybody's gonna complain. <laughs> Yeah, I'm here.